The program I have just shown you illustrates a more general approach called fork join parallelism. You fork a thread, do some work in parallel, and then you join the thread. So here's a picture that describes it. There is a fork point, thread one, two, and three start running in parallel, and then they join together. But this is an idealized picture. In reality, it looks more like this. So the forking is done by the main thread or the parent thread. It forks one worker, here's the worker two, then forks another worker, and then usually it does some work in the main thread, and then all these threads are joined together by the main thread. And you can fork as many threads as necessary, and you can let them all do work in parallel. Just make sure that at the end you join all of them. Let me show how this is done. So we have a few includes here, and I also included a vector for storing threads. So let's start with main. Now we want to create, let's say, 16 threads. And we'll have to store the thread objects in a vector. So let me start vector, std vector of std thread. And let's call it threads. Now we need a loop for int i equals 0, i less than, let's say, 16, plus plus i. And inside the loop, we will be creating threads. And here I have a choice. I could create each thread on the stack, just like I did before, and then push it onto the vector. However, the thread object cannot be copied. Thread objects have move semantics. So I would have to resize the stack, the vector, and then use standard move to move each thread to its position and so on. But that's kind of awkward. So instead, I'll use the new feature of C++11, a new method on, on a vector called emplaceBack. This method constructs an object directly in the storage space provided by the vector. All we need is to pass it the arguments to the constructor. And in this case, the argument to the thread constructor is just a callable object. And for variety, I will use an inline function, a lambda, instead of a function pointer. So threads. and place back. And here's the lambda. And just like before, we'll just print a greeting. Hello from thread. And that's it. Close it. Now let's print some greeting from main. std c out. Hello from main. And finally, we have to join all the threads. And I'm going to use a new C11 range based loop. For let's use auto by reference t from threads t dot join. So let me compile and run this program. I'll put a breakpoint here. And let's see what happens. Notice an interesting thing. The message hello from main appears in the middle of messages from worker threads. 
In fact, it will appear in a random place every time I run the program. So let me run it again. This is a very important property of fork join parallelism, non-determinism. The order in which threads are executed is non-deterministic. Every time you run a program, you may get a different interleaving of threads. Not only that, a thread may get preempted in the middle of execution, and another thread may jump in. So let's try another experiment that will demonstrate this. Let's try to print more than just one thing from the thread. Let's print the loop counter. We can capture the counter i inside the lambda just by adding it to the lambda capture list. i and let's print it. And a new line. Let's run this program. This is much more interesting. The output is now randomly chopped. We see hello from thread, but before the number is printed, another thread jumps in and starts printing. Also, the numbers are a little bit reshuffled. Let's try it again and see what happens. We get another permutation, and so on. Every time you run this program, you get a different permutation. Non-determinism is a major headache in concurrent programming. Just imagine you have a bug in your program. You may run your program a thousand times and get correct results. But there may be one particular interleaving of threads that hits the bug. And you may not see it before the program is shipped to the users. This happens all the time. There are many horror stories shared among programmers. Just as a warning, let me show you how easy it is to write a buggy concurrent program. I'll make just one little change. I'll change the capture of i from by value to by reference. Here, let me replace i, the value of i, by reference. So now this lambda captures everything by reference. And let's run this program. Did you notice anything? I didn't. But the program is incorrect. We can make it more likely to trip if we insert little timing disturbances in each thread. There is a function called sleep4. It's in the this thread namespace. And it takes a time segment that's defined in chrono. So let me include Chrono. Okay. And let me make each thread sleep. So STD this thread, that's the namespace, sleep for, and the time STD. Chrono milliseconds. And let's say 10 times i milliseconds. And let's run this. Now, do you see the problem? 
the number 16 is replicated many times. That's because 16 is the last value of i. The threads are not capturing the value of the counter. They are not capturing it at the time the loop is executed. They are capturing a reference. They capture the reference to a changing value. And things can get even more tricky when the original variable is allowed to go out of scope. To show you what I mean, I'll move the thread creation loop to a separate function, spawn. So spawn will return a vector of threads. And I will call it from main. equals spawn semicolon and let's run it this is a disaster the local counter that was captured by reference by each thread went out of scope and its value was replaced by garbage. It's not hard to imagine a situation in which this kind of a bug could lead to a serious security breach. And it's not only an easy mistake to make, but its discovery might depend on some random changes in timing, just like we did. We have just started writing concurrent programs, and I'm already talking about bugs. It's because learning concurrency is as much about writing correct code as it is about avoiding mistakes. You won't appreciate the importance of various rules and techniques unless you understand the kind of dangers they protect you from.